All right. Thank you, Don. Thank you. Uh, blogarithm, is that a little cheesy for the name of a blog? No, for math, I guess it's okay, right? Um, the address, I'll have all the addresses up at the end, so um, I'll leave that slide up at the end so you can get all that. And I also have some business cards if, rather than copy it down, you, I can just give it to you. Um, what I'm here to talk about today is my experience with student contracts. And uh, I know this is a course redesign workshop. Mine is a little bit more about a personal redesign, redesigning your course, redesigning the way you teach so that you can play on your strengths and uh, try to get the behaviors out of your students that you value. Uh, so uh, don't feel like you have to copy everything down because I do have the handouts on my website that you can get afterwards. Okay. So a good talk should start with a warning to get your attention, and here's my warning. Uh, some of these ideas that you're going to see may not work at your school. Okay. For instance, if you're at a school that requires a mandatory final exam, common final exam, this first contract won't work at your school. But what I'm hoping is that some of the things that you see, you'll be able to take and adapt to what you value and come up with an incentive system that will motivate your developmental math students. Uh, where I got started with a contract. I have um, a pretty good idea that in, in here in Massachusetts and New England, I grew up in New England myself, I'm a Rhode Island guy, so I understand what things are like. Uh, I bet our students are pretty similar. In California, our developmental math students are low on confidence, low on self-esteem, and high on anxiety. Same here? Okay. Uh, my colleague, I have a colleague, Mark Tom, uh, we carpool together. And we were always trying to find ways to motivate our students. Our department meetings, we never talk about, hey, I've got this great example for the quadratic formula, or you know, th I've got this perfect rational expression that'll teach students how to uh, simplify ra rational expressions. We talk about how do we motivate our students to do the things that we feel are necessary for success. My colleague, uh, Mark, he was a pencil and paper homework guy. And he, didn't, he never graded it, and students didn't do it. So he made homework 10% of the grade, and they didn't do it. So the next semester, he raises it to 15%, and they didn't do it. So the next semester, he makes it 20%, and they still didn't do it. Okay. Now, at 20%, you're in, you're in big trouble because if you need 70% at the end to pass and you're going to give away 20%, there's not a lot of room for error there. So the next semester, he went to 50%. And you know what? At 50%, they do it. Uh, so I know that the correct number is somewhere between 20 and 50 for written homework. Uh, I'm not that extreme of a guy. Uh, at the same time, any administrators? John, you, you're close. Okay. Uh, at our school, we have a college president that really believes in education first, counting numbers second. He was a chemistry professor, and we were having a meeting where he talked about a student contract that he used. He listed the behaviors that were important to him, and the reward that he gave his students were if they, um, if they turned in their notebook, if they attended the extra study sessions, if, um, if they were in class every day, he guaranteed that they wouldn't score below 70% on the exam. Now, to me, that was a little extreme because a student could go through the motions and still make it. So uh, I started thinking about how I could make it work for me, and that's what this talk is about. Before we get into that, here's what I want you to think about. What student behaviors are important to you? What do you want your students to do that you think will lead to success? And then I'll share mine. But I'm going to need a volunteer. Somebody share with me what you think is it. What, what would lead a student on the path to success in developmental math? Huh? Go, oh, go ahead. Self-discipline? OK. Ask for help when you need it. Somebody else? 
Yeah. Do all the work. Okay. Get involved. Okay. Yeah, very good. On a regular schedule. Very good. All good ideas. And the beauty of the contract is that you can work that, whatever your beliefs are, you can work those into a contract that will reward students for following through with those behaviors. So for instance, working on a regular basis, if, every, if your students meet the regular deadlines for an entire exam, this is the payoff for that. Okay. I'll share mine. Uh, this is right off of my syllabus. Uh, this was from fall 07, and this was in an intermediate algebra class, the first contract I used. Uh, any student who meets the following criteria will have the option of completing a final cumulative assignment as opposed to taking the final exam. And whatever grade they had in the course at that point, they got to keep. Okay. Here's the criteria. First thing, they had to have perfect scores on every My Math Lab homework assignment for the whole semester. Like Adriana, Andrina, sorry, I do that all the time. Uh, she was talking about she wanted 100%, I wanted 100% too. Second, they had to have a quiz average of at least 80% in My Math Lab over the course of the semester. Third, they couldn't miss any more than two days during the semester. And fourth, they had to have a passing pencil and paper exam average. Okay. Those were the four things that they had to do. Um, perfect scores on my math lab homework are achievable. I think that that's a measure of persistence. And to me, that's what developmental students need. So I'm going to reward that. Uh, second, the my math lab quizzes were all about uh, I, I do offer the more than one attempt at the quizzes. We count the highest score. It's all about finding where your issues are, remediating yourself, and then going back and, and reassessing. Sort of the mastery principle that we heard earlier. Third, I think the most important was the absences. Because where do we learn mathematics? We learn it in the classroom. We may cement it when we get home, but we do the most of the learning takes place during those 50 minutes that we're all together. And I wanted them there. Finally, the last one was more for my colleagues than anything. Right? Because the traditional way that we assess our students, the traditional way we label our students were based on these pencil and paper exams. So I wanted to convince my colleagues that these are students who would have been passing in their course as well. Uh, the way that my grading, I know these percentages are a little weird, uh, I had a 1,200 point syllabus. If uh, they met the contract and opted out of the final exam, their regular exam scores were still 75% of their grade. 25% came from my math lab. Before that, it would have been one sixth from my math lab, one half from the final exam, and uh, one, th I'm sorry, one, one half from the regular exam one-third from the final exam. So even with the final exam out of commission, most of their grade was still earned in the traditional fashion, in class, pencil and paper exam. Uh, real quickly about some of the homework and quiz details, I give a homework assignment for every section we cover. Uh, they are, as you know, allowed to work it until they get it correct. I don't limit the number of attempts on that. I think if a student wants to try a problem a hundred times, we should be happy with that. 